Hello and welcome to episode nine of Carry On With Carrie podcast. Um, thanks for being here again with me this week. Um, I, I've had such good responses so far and I'm, I'm just really grateful for this experience. It's been um, a, definitely a learning experience for me, uh, but in, a, in the most positive of ways. Um, I wanted to, um, today I'm on my own here, uh, which will happen from time to time, um, especially in the summer months here. Um, and even just as I, as I get used to doing this and finding contacts and people that are willing to open up and, and, um, talk on this kind of platform. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit today about, um, what to do when you're in a funk. So how to get out of your funk. Um, I will be, this will be kind of a shorter episode today. I just wanted to, um, I don't know, give a few kind of little hints about what I know has worked for me. Um, and maybe some of the things that haven't worked for me, but, um, getting out of a funk and the difference between a funk and depression. Uh, for me, um, it can be kind of, uh, because I do suffer with depression, it can actually be a bit confusing from time to time. It, uh, at different points, like I think, hmm, am I actually depressed right now? Is this a situational thing? Is this based on many factors of being tired or overworked or, you know, over my, usual overdoing it with things. Um, that like this last week, for instance, I, I was actually in a pretty kind of crappy place and, um, just for a couple days and, you know, I would say it was borderline depression. That's kind of how I, I thought it was anyways. Um, but you know, looking back at it, it, was it a depression or just a couple day funk? Like this last week we had colder than normal, normal temperatures here and, uh, it rained a lot and I love the rain, but with the rain and the cold comes being kind of trapped inside again. And, um, I tried to keep busy with family and, um, friends and stuff, but it, I do find it tends to get to me a little bit, but, uh, I guess the difference from my perspective would be when you're in a funk, um, it's more of a temporary feeling. It's very short lived. It's a moment of feeling, um, you know, a bit tired and overwhelmed and, um, just not quite yourself. Um, whereas depression is a lot longer lived. Um, you have, you start, you're feeling exhausted all the time. You can't get out of, um, of that feeling of sadness and depression. Um, you lose interest completely in many things and socializing. Uh, so, and you can even feel physical pain. Now it's kind of a fine line. So I guess the way, the reason why I'm bringing this one up today too, is I think it's possible for anybody to go through a funk whether you, you suffer with any kind of mental illness or not, um, you can still just have those days that are just kind of crappy and it doesn't have to be more than that. Um, and how to kind of follow through or flow through that feeling of, um, you know, just not feeling like yourself. I, I think there's many different ways. I know for me, I'm, I'm learning to just kind of ride through it. Um, and as Carly kind of mentioned to us last week with body talk, just breathe, you know, breathe through it, allow those emotions to be felt and move them forward. Um, because that's, that is emotions are movement and it is flow. And if you let those emotions flow and those feelings happen, um, you can come out the other end of that, um, feeling a bit lighter and a little bit better about yourself. Um, so for me getting out of a funk, uh, a few, th a few things that I've noticed, um, when I'm feeling that way, um, some, 
very helpful things are, first of all, just movement. You know, you might find yourself um, stuck on your couch or um, sitting there, you know, lying in bed too long or just any number of things. Even sometimes if you're in a funk and you're reading it and you're stuck there reading for too long, um, you, you do need to have movement. And that could mean just getting up and stretching once in a while um, and, and feel your body, feel your limbs, feel everything stretching out and, and make it an actual um, mindful practice feeling how your body feels when you stand up and you put your feet on the ground or you just ground yourself with your feet. Um, it could be as simple as moving your toes around, um, flexing your, your fingers and moving them around and making circles with your wrists and your ankles. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a big exercise. If that's all you can, can manage, then that's, that's sometimes all it takes to kind of like break free of that that feeling at that moment. Um, and of course with movement, you know, I, I'm a big advocate for walks. Um, I love my nature walks. It doesn't even have to be nature. It can be out in the, in the park, in the back. It can be, um, around my neighborhood, um, even to the store. If, if you, you know, instead of taking, getting in your car, it's a nice day, uh, take a walk to the store and back and just grab something. And, and then you get to see people too. Um, and which leads me to connection. So um, I know for myself and for others, I've, I've heard it can be hard um, to make connection at a time when you're not feeling your, your best. Um, but I do think that those are the times that we need to reach out to people the most. And I speak from personal experience on that, whether it be you know, your, your animal, your pet, um, you know, interacting with them is socializing in itself, but we also need to feel like we're not alone, um, with another person. And if there's someone in your life that you trust and you feel safe with, I just encourage you to give them a call, just see how they're doing. And I think I know for me nine times out of 10, I generally all, I, I lighten up right away and I, I have just enough of that social interaction that it, it might be just all I need to get out of that, that feeling of heaviness, um, healthy eating. So I know another, I know for me sometimes, like, I don't know what it is lately, but I've been craving chocolate like crazy, which Chocolate can be good, but in in moderation. So I try to do that and ice cream for some reason too. But um, you'll notice with your blood sugar levels, your um, I know for me, I'll become hangry. And it actually, I had mentioned, I don't really get hangry. I get sad. So um, some people get quite short and um, just on edge or it can give you anxiety as well. So when you're eating and nourishing your body with, with, um, by hydrating and eating healthy foods, I know it sounds so cliche, but it is just the truth. And it's a simple thing and it doesn't have to be an elaborate meal. It doesn't have to be something that you spend hours making, but you know, choose some, some, even if it is a comfort food that day, if you like grilled cheese in, um, tomato soup or just something that that makes you feel warm inside i guess um but try to pick a little bit healthier choice because your body feeds um and your brain feeds from what you're feeding your body um and it, it can be a hard one especially with you know, like, if, especially if you are in that funk, it's hard to get motivated to do something. So even if you had, you know, when you're in a really good mood, you're feeling better about yourself, make yourself a few to go, um, either frozen meals or, um, like make your own individual, uh, proportions and, and have them ready for the days that you're not really feeling that motivated. Um, and that can make all the difference, right? It might make those days maybe a little more tolerable. 
sleeping. So sleeping is a major part of, of, um, mental health. And I know, again, I'm going to refer to myself because that's, that's the only person I have to, uh, to work off of here. But, um, I, I know I go in, I used to be the type of person who could sleep through, like if a bomb went off, I could sleep. It didn't matter. Um, I don't find that anymore. And I, I, uh, you know, it's, it's the thinking, it's the, um, monkey mind. It's just the constant go, go, go. Um, and I, you know, there's a few tricks to having better sleep, um, turning off your TV, which again, I think I've mentioned before, I do tend to watch some TV before bed. Um, listening to a podcast or, um, a white noise podcast is, I found one that it's, it's really helped me to, to kind of just get this, it's just, it quiets my mind down and it just rocks me to sleep. Just giving yourself some, some, love and care, um, getting off social media. Let's, let's be real about this one. I, you know, you sit down, my son actually kind of called me and myself and my other son out. He came home from, from work and he says, I got home and you and you and uh, Jared were, had your noses stuffed in your phones. And I was like, Oh boy, like, I'm sorry I did that. Cause I, I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious of it, but I think we all get caught up in it. Um, it, I've definitely been trying very hard to get myself disengaged with social media. Part of my job at work is social media. Part of what I do with this, it um, it requires social media. And I also have, um, a calligraphy business that I, I use social media for, for my artwork and all that stuff. And, um, so I do need it to a certain level, but I, I think that what I've realized is it doesn't need to be to the extent that I was once using it. It, it just can be so unhealthy, um, and can put you in a worse funk because you're comparing your life to other people, um, or wishing you were doing more or, you know, we all know kind of how that whole rabbit hole goes. Plus it's a waste of time. (laughs) Most of the time it's a waste of time. Sometimes we can get laughter out of it and that's good. And we can make connections with other people. And that I do appreciate that part of it is being able to talk to other people and be in, um, different communities that I'm on, um, in groups on Facebook or, um, you know, different things that way, keeping in contact with family members, friends, and, um, getting out with invites and stuff like that on social media. But I'm, you know, I think it's time to just kind of like take that down a little bit, at least from my perspective. Um, so taking a break from your thoughts, um, with mindfulness exercises is a huge one. For me, as I, I kind of mentioned about my artwork and that's been a huge, um, it's a huge one for me to get me out of a funk. Although sometimes I find I'm not as creative during those times, but I, when I do actually kind of push myself through that and even if I'm just like, maybe I won't create exactly the same way as I would when I'm feeling really, really inspired. But, um, I'll even just by holding the pencil and just doodling and making things that wouldn't make sense to anybody else, it can also lead to getting out of that and actually some pretty inspiring moments. Um, now cleaning with a great, some great, um, playlists that can be um, a really good one to get you out of it. Again, these are all things that you don't have to do all of them to get out of it. It's just certain ideas that, um, can be helpful. They're just like the simple things in life. You know, um, I know we all feel better when, when things are tidied up a bit. And if that's all you can kind of muster up is, is maybe doing a little bit of dusting or, you know, 
cleaning up one table or one room or, you know, it doesn't have to be the entire house. Um, for me too, when I'm kind of feeling like if I've been in the house too long, um, another practice for me is to get outside and even if it's only for like five minutes and plant my feet on the ground and feel that and the, the energy shifts completely for me when I do that. It's just reminding myself to go and do it. Um, and I mean, of course, above and beyond that is to go out for your walks, like I was saying before, and and just getting outside. And if you are reading a book, instead of sitting in the house and doing it that way, maybe sit out in a lawn chair and, and read a book and um, put some soft music on. Um, plan a small trip. You know, it doesn't have to be a massive trip, although that would be wonderful. Like my trip to Europe or Iceland someday would be amazing. But um, just plan. And when I say a trip, it could be a trip to, to, you know, a town next to you or across the city in where you live. And um, it can be just seeing something without even spending a ton of money. Um, you can just go and see or experience something different than you have before. Um, and then pamper yourself. I guess all of those things kind of are a pampering of for yourself. Um, pour yourself a bath. Uh, do your nails. Um, it, I mean, we all know there's so many different. Have one piece of chocolate. Uh, and pampering yourself can also just be um, breathing, meditation, um, that's a big one for me. Um, and it brings, it brings you a feeling of connection to something, to something other than yourself. And that's oftentimes when we get stuck is when we're, we're in our brain and we're not, you know, you're really focused on, um, your, your endless thoughts. And, um, it's, Getting out of that funk can be a lot easier than it seems. Um, and being gentle with yourself as you kind of flow through that time. Um, I would like to take some time to just do a little bit of a reflection, um, which is, I guess could be considered a meditation in itself. Um, and I just want to, I'll end this podcast with just that kind of, um, more relaxed feeling where you breathe in breathe out, feel your breath, breathe in again and hold it for five seconds. Breathe out and hold that for five. You can close your eyes if you feel more comfortable, if it puts you into a more relaxed state. And I would like you to take a moment to imagine yourself in a nice, warm, safe place. Maybe you're sitting down on the floor and um, feeling grounded. Maybe you're laying on your back. Uh, maybe you're on a walk. Whatever it is that you, you might be doing in this moment and thinking about it, bring yourself to a place of complete peace. You can feel your body getting a little bit heavier. All the tension is starting to leave. If you feel any tension in your neck, in your back, feel it and release it. Take in another deep breath and hold it for five. and breathe out for five. 
as each time you uh, breathe a little bit deeper, you're going to feel yourself relax and into more of a state of meditation, into a state of calm and reflection. You're resetting, you're resetting your mind, your body, and giving yourself the grace for self-care, self-love. If you can just imagine now that you can feel on the top of your head, you can even put your hand on your forehead or on the very top crown of your head and give yourself some love with your hand, just holding it there. And when you release your hand from your forehead, feel the light that comes in. You can feel sunshine and brightness and light, and you can let all of that come in. Allow it to fuel you, to feed you, to make you feel, again, I keep saying safe, to feel safe. To give your mind a massage. Take in another breath. Allow that light that you've just let in to go through you, all the way through every cell of your body. You can feel it in your face, in your neck, all the way down into your arms, all the way down to the ends of your fingertips. And you feel like you, you're holding your palms up and your fingertips are held up and you can feel that vibration of good energy Allow that energy to flow down into your body. Hold your hand on your stomach and on your heart. And allow yourself to ground. Ground into the earth. Allow all that energy to flow. Take in all of the energy that you feel, all the good stuff to refuel. Now you can feel it in your legs, in your knees. You can feel it in your ankles, your toes. You can just feel this, this almost like vibration and you know it's a, it's a warm, safe, good feeling. It's an energy, a good energy. Bring all of that energy forward. Allow your body through breath, another breath, to circulate that energy throughout your body and allow yourself to slowly come back feeling a little bit lighter than you did before, feeling a lot more self-love, feeling a little bit more energized in yourself. This is, um, as you come, as you come back, you'll, you'll feel more energized and, um, ready to move forward a little bit, a little bit more. Um, These are the things that we can do for ourselves. We can just imagine these things and anybody can do it. It it doesn't have to be done with a meditation expert. Um, Again, I'm not an expert um, with this. I I just have my thoughts and I wanna share. I wanna share with others how to heal and feel, 
feel better through self-care, self-love. And if you need to get out of a funk, I hope this episode has helped a little bit to to just give you a few tips and tricks to get um, a step further and to flow forward. Thank you for um, taking the time to listen to um, the podcast. And you can find me on Facebook at Carry On With Carrie Podcast and on Instagram at Carry On With Carrie underscore podcast. And right now I'm available on Spotify. Um, so yeah, if you can give me a share, a like, and follow, um, that would be wonderful. And um, again, thank you for... Um, allowing me this platform to share. Thank you. And you guys have an amazing um, week. I will see you next Thursday. Mm -hmm.